got some room. Darrell Green. Good go. Eric Dickerson. Still going. Dickerson will go. The draft class of 1983. Well, call it the quarterback draft of 1983 because that's all you ever hear about, right? Any and all drafts, including the next one on your viewing list, will inevitably talk QBs and also inevitably be referenced to 1983. But while there were three legendary passers and a whopping six taken in the first round, there were seven. Seven Hall of Famers to come out of this class. Eric Dickerson, 85 yards. Starting with that dude going coast to coast against the Jets at the stadium Daryl Strawberry used to go yard in. Eric Dickerson gained a staggering 1,808 rushing yards during his rookie campaign and would go on to rush for over 3,900 yards in his first two seasons in the league. Good luck ever seeing that matched. And speaking of Darrell's, when Darrell Green wasn't taking a punt back, he was covering the whole field. Draw play, Dorsett and look out. Uh-oh, this could be bye-bye. He has great speed down the sideline, Tony Dorsett. And look who caught him. And only one man on the field could catch him, Darrell Green. If Hall of Fame is your thing, then the first round had more to offer. Bruce Matthews was taken ninth overall by the then Houston Oilers, and like Green, toiled for two decades. Except he did it in the trenches. Oh, and he made the Pro Bowl at three different positions on the offensive line. How about that? In fact, so many great offensive and defensive linemen were discovered that maybe this 1983 draft has been misidentified. Top five pick Chris Hinton played tackle at a high level for over a decade, making seven Pro Bowls in the process. Dallas's first round pick, Jim Jeffcoat, almost anonymously garnered over 100 career sacks. Chased by Jeffcoat, pulled down and sacked by Jeffcoat. Jeffcoat wasn't the only NFC East defensive end to come out of the 83 draft and terrorize 49er quarterbacks in the playoffs. Here's Montana, long time in the pocket. But chased out, finally hit from behind. The ball's loose. Right there is a hit. Leonard Marshall coming from the backside. Leonard Marshall tallied 27 and a half sacks for the 85-86 Parcells Giants, winning a Super Bowl in the process and playing as well as any defensive end in the NFL. Almost. White back pedals underneath his crossbar, fires the right side of the ball, tipped in the air by Hampton, picked up by Dent, spins to the end zone, touchdown! Richard Dent led the league with 17 sacks in 1985, helping the Bears dominate the Patriots in Super Bowl XX. Perhaps more impressively, at least from a team standpoint, was that the Hall of Famer was one of seven Bears starters from that draft. What a haul. Willie Gall, Mike Richardson, Dave Duerson, and three more linemen, these on the offensive side, Jim Covert, Tom Thayer, and Mark Boris. The dream is reality. The Chicago Bears are world champions of football. Even with all the talent up front, trying to talk about anything but quarterback with the class of 83 is difficult. Baltimore selects as the first choice of the draft, quarterback John Elway of Stanford. John Elway won the 1987 league MVP, started five Super Bowls, and won two of them. Jim Kelly went 13 picks later and even faced Elway in the 1991 AFC Championship game, then joined him in Canton after starting four Super Bowls himself. 13 picks after Kelly, number 13 in aqua and orange took the league by storm in 1983, leading the AFC in passer rating as a rookie. He took the NFL record book by storm the following season. He fires it across the middle. Clayton's got it. 25, 6, 1, 20, gets a block. 15, 10, 5, touchdown Miami. That guy on the receiving end of Marino's record-setting 48th touchdown pass? How about Mark Clayton? who had 18 touchdowns in 1984, which in and of itself was a league record, and was the 223rd overall selection in the 83 draft. A few years down the road, Marino, Clayton, and friends found themselves in a historic track meet with the Jets and their 24th overall pick from this very talented class. O'Brien throwing long down the sideline for Walker, and he got, got it! it. Got Touchdown! It. The Jets win in the fifth! Ken O'Brien paced the league in passer rating in 1985 and helped the Jets make it to the postseason that year and the next, as did the Patriots' Tony Eason, who actually took his team to a Super Bowl and was picked nine spots earlier than O'Brien. The sixth quarterback from this talented first round was the Chiefs' Todd Blackledge, who parlayed a national championship in 1982 
to being the seventh overall pick and first quarterback taken after Elway. Quarterbacks or not, round one kept spitting out good players. Like the Seahawks' Kurt Warner, who went one pick after Dickerson. Second and goal at the six. There has never been a more productive rookie running back duo. The numbers prove it. A combined 3,257 rushing yards and 31 rushing touchdowns for Warner and Dickerson in 1983. These two were among a talented crop of playmakers who got drafted into the AFC and NFC West. Among them was running back Roger Craig, who went to the 49ers at, appropriately, number 49. Two seasons later, the 49th overall pick became the first player to gain 1,000 yards rushing and receiving in the same season. Montana Cooley throwing for Craig, who has it at the 20. Look out. Dickerson's teammate, Henry Ellard, was taken by the Rams in the second round and finished third in career receiving yards at the time of his retirement, behind only Jerry Rice and James Lofton. Ellard was an awesome special teams player as was Kansas City's third round pick. Here comes Lewis, he blocks another! Albert Lewis blocks it, and it's Kansas City. Touchdown, Kevin Ross! Albert Lewis made four Pro Bowls as a corner while blocking 10 punts in 11 seasons with the Chiefs. Both he and Ellard played all the way until 1998. The hits just kept on coming. Minnesota pulled six-time Pro Bowler Joey Brown at the 19th spot. The Chargers got Gil Bird, who tallied a franchise-high 42 career interceptions. At 26 overall, the Raiders drafted another Pro Bowl lineman in center Don Mosbar. He and fourth-round pick Greg Townsend, who, oh, by the way, had 109 and a half career sacks, would help the Los Angeles Raiders bring home the Lombardi Trophy nine months later. Pete Rozelle present the championship trophy to the Los Angeles Raiders. Have we mentioned this was a deep class? Tim Crumry went in the 10th round of the Bengals and by 1988 was considered the top nose tackle in football. One slot after Crumry, Swerve and Mervin Fernandez went to the Raiders, then to the CFL, then back to the Raiders and put up a thousand yards receiving in 1989. The 11th round featured Jesse Cipolla, who played in an unbelievable eight NFC championship games for the 49ers. The 12th round did even better. That's right, the 12th round. Carl Mecklenburg did everything for the Broncos and could play anywhere in the front seven. The second to last pick, at pick 334, topped that total in yardage in two crazy playoff games for the 87 Vikings. Wilson comes once. Anthony Carter. Wilson deep. Complete down to the 10 yard line. Anthony Carter. 10 catches. 227 yards. Anthony Carter could play, man. And boy, has he been forgotten. As have so many of the fantastic players from the 83 draft living in the shadow of the six quarterbacks. Maybe the poster child in that regard is a guy who was totally overlooked in the specter of Elway. You see, number seven was only one of the quarterbacks that ended up on the Broncos roster that spring. The QB they took in the eighth round knows a little something about winning Super Bowls just like Elway. Gary Kubiak, Texas A&M, pick number 197 in the number one draft of all time.